Hey guys, welcome back to this place. And if you are new, then welcome here for the very first time. I am Carmen and today we are watching season five, episode eight of The Expanse. Ah, uh, you guys, I am <laughs> a little bit less stressed than last episode because in editing, I kind of realized I might have a tiny bit have overreacted to what was happening with Naomi. <laughs> I am just, as you know, if you've watched these, an incredibly emotional person and The Expanse just does such a great job of getting you so in emotionally invested in these characters that the idea of losing one of them is, it's terrifying to me. And so, yeah. I mean, in my defense, she literally jumped out into space without a freaking spacesuit, spacesuit, <laughs> whatever. But you know what I mean? So girl, just she just trying to stress me out. But <laughs> aside from that, we have lots more to be stressed out about. We have Holden who is going towards, or he already saw the Zemea get destroyed but he doesn't know that Marco's ship is after him, that the Chetsamoka is probably rigged. It's a trap. Of course, now Naomi's on it, so hopefully she can, she can undo that. And uh, you guys, I'm just really stressed. I do not want Naomi to die. I don't want Holden to die. I don't want Alex or Bobby or Christian or Kamina or, Amos or I don't want anything bad to happen to any character that I love and uh, I'm just scared because because I'm just scared <laughs> um yeah you know I think that I have rambled at you guys for long enough in this beginning section so let's just get into the episode and then stress about it you know during and, and after it <laughs> Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, okay. Brother. Oh, is he dead? He died? What? You saw what happened? I yes. had no idea that he died. Sim was trying to stop out. I go, no, tell me how your mother died. They think she's dead. This is good. She didn't have to kill Sim. She didn't kill him, you did. I mean, he didn't kill him, but neither did she, okay? Like, he he saw the thing in her hand and chose to go after her. That's... They think she's dead. This is good. This is good. That's my girl. That's my girl. You okay? You okay? Get up. You're fine. Oh, God. Okay, she might not be fine. She's alive. She's alive. She's alive. Okay, that's all that matters. Look at this girl. Please tell me she's not gonna be trapped on this ship with no way to do anything. That big bomb. That's a big bomb. No. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. I, I have faith. I believe in you. Is there only people talking? I would, that would be so awkward. Like you're clapping. I'm, I only got this position because someone died. As your secretary general, what I lack in experience, I will more than make up for in passion, dedication, and internal support. Former Secretary General Christian of Asurala and Admiral Felix Delgado were directly responsible for enabling our forces to beat back the attacks. They mm -hmm. saved millions of lives. Mm -hmm. Our planet is forever indebted to them. Where's your clapping now? And I am honored to have them at my side. There we go. Here's where the clapping should exist. I have authorized the largest manhunt in human history. For Marco and Aris. 
We will not stop until Marco Anaros and all his associates have been hunted down. But not Kamina. Cause, cause she's not guilty. But make no mistake, we will prevail. Okay. We must. This is the beginning of the reckoning. The first step towards justice and this journey will the not end reckoning. until we are victorious. Okay, he, he got a bit too um, zealous there, in my opinion, but, but all right. Let him, it's the end of the world, kind of, right? Just, just let him enjoy his, his alcohol. Only you could survive an asteroid attack and then willingly walk into a more dangerous situation. Well, I figure things have changed enough that the old rules didn't apply to the new situation. Who the hell is this? Peaches. If you're looking for help, there's not much I can do for you. We're here to help you. Have you heard of Winnipesaukee Island? Vacation houses that are mostly empty, and each has a hangar with a suborbital shuttle. That'll get us to Luna. How do you know about this? I used to summer there. Jules Pierre Mao is her father. father. Jules Pierre Mao. Mm -hmm. Insane. Yes, that one. Can you get us there? What's in it for me? free ride off the yeah. planet. Why the fuck would I want to leave? This place was a shithole before it was underwater. Yeah, but now he's king of the shithole. You're not gonna make it. Fuck you, Timmy. I carved my place out of the fucking skin of Baltimore. I knew this woman once. Fellow royalty? No, fellow inmate. She killed her children, all five of them. But she talked about them like they were still alive. Like when she got up the next morning, they'd still be there. I thought she was crazy, but she came up to me one day and said, I know they're dead, but I know I'm dead too. You're the only bitch in here who thinks she's still alive. As soon as she said that, I knew the she person I was was dead. He thinks he's still alive. He thinks he can still run Baltimore, but there's not Baltimore to run anymore. Then the seawall at Fells Point went and the whole fucking ocean just ran over the city. Federal Hill, lands down, whole fucking neighborhoods <gasps> I used to run washed away. What about, oh, what's his name? Charles? We cut him off at the knees. Palace Station is the one I think we should focus on. You can't just kill a whole station. Uh, how many belters are on that station? Between nine and 13,000. You can't. Can you give us an estimate of how many are actual Anaros loyalists? Yeah. It's a hard number to assess. So the majority of casualties could still be innocent civilians. Like the millions and counting yeah. of ours that they killed. If we start murdering innocent Belters, we'll radicalize every Belter who does not support Inoros. Yeah. Then we won't be fighting a faction. We'll be fighting the entire belt. We already are fighting the entire belt. You're not. Why this shouldn't even be considered an option. Marco yeah. Inaros doesn't speak for all Belters. Yeah. He acted like he does in his broadcast. But he doesn't, he's a person. <gasps> what was that? It was something sharp, right? <laughs> Honey, you can do it. I bet her body is just like fucked, you know what I mean? Good girl, you got it. We gotta think, we gotta think. There's gotta be something that she can do. Is she going into space? Hun, what you doing? You don't have any oxygen. My name is Naomi Nagata, and I'm aboard the freighter Chetsumoko. Okay. 
An automated distress call in my voice is being broadcast from this ship. It is a lie, a simulation to lure the Rosinante into a trap. The Chetsamoka is a bomb. I'm using an improvised radio. I've been locked out of the ship's comms and I cannot transmit, but I can receive. I don't know what channel this is, but if you hear this, please respond. But do not, I repeat, do not approach this ship. Oh God, who's gonna get it? We made the decision together. She didn't have a choice. It was the right one. No. Then why are you pushing me away? We will get through this. I'm not sure I can. I'm gonna scan the emergency channels. Any ships the Free Navy attacks will send out on May Day. Might help narrow our search. She might get... Did she get the actual message? Holy shit. Did you get the actual message? We just got a message from the Razorback. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, tell me what it is. We just picked up an automated distress call on one of the emergency channels. It's Naomi. We found her. It's an automated. No, 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 no. If you get this message, please repress it. It's Tell James Holden I'm in. No, it's the automated one. No! The Belter struck our home. We need to strike back at theirs. The casualties will be substantial. Not compared to ours. The Naros deliberately targeted our citizens. Now he's using his own people as human shields. One evil Their doesn't is on his make another evil. Not no, it, it's on both of yours. on our hands before this is over. Well, if it's more of theirs, I'll take it. That's fucking evil. Does, does he not see, like, how fucked up that way of thinking is? Just a mocha. This is Alex Kamal on the Razorback. <sighs> scream and fire hawk for now. Naomi, we heard your call. We are burning hard for <laughs> now. I'm not nearly as smart as Naomi, so I have no idea what she's doing. We picked up a distress call. I'm from Naomi Nagata. What's the situation? Naomi Nagata is the road to Nante. If you get this message, please return to them. No. Set a course for that ship. No! Dewalt and Motang will remain here to continue the salvage. You can't help her. Watch me. Naomi is not aboard that ship. How would you know? Because she's dead. Naomi was aboard the Pella when you were there. Feel it, brother. Naomi had gone looking for him, and he wanted to know who his mother really was. And he found out when he watched her walk out of the airlock. The message was not real, just a sim. Part of a bigger plan that you need not know about. You are a liar. I don't care if you believe me. I shang him, Marina! Please. Please. I mean, how many people can she lose? You know what I mean? She's not dead. Don't do something stupid. I mean, the guard has the right to Please return to that. Mom is not responding. Honey, honey, go, go back to the oxygen, please. Naomi stopped believing in what we were fighting for. She stopped believing in the way that you were fighting. She only truly cared about herself. You're so fucking stupid. This dress culture stop. Hey, it wasn't supposed to. Why did the message change? Could someone be on the ship? Could it be Naomi? It can't be. It is. It's impossible. No, it's not. She's dead. No. Nope. 
Okay, you guys. So I have a lot of thoughts about that episode. I am once again stressed because Holden, Alex, Bobby, possibly now Kamina are going to be going after the Chetsamoka because of the fake distress call that they set up and nobody heard Naomi's real distress call and I just like is somebody gonna get that I just I don't know who's gonna get it I'm kind of scared that Marco might get it and then he's gonna know that she's alive and then that's gonna be a whole a whole different bad situation obviously at the end we saw that lady and that other lady why do I not know anybody's name but we saw the lady from Marco's ship and Kamina's kind of girlfriend we saw them we saw the lady from Marco's ship get the notification that the distress call had stopped which also I'm now just now realizing that Marco probably got that as well which means that he knows that Naomi is alive possibly <sighs> fuck anyway so now Kamina's girlfriend thinks that Naomi might be alive and I just feel like they're gonna go after the Chetsamoka to see which is just gonna put everybody in danger like everyone everyone is in danger and I am very mm, scared about it I really feel for Kamina in this episode she is stuck doing something that she doesn't believe in and she is having to follow orders of somebody that she doesn't believe in in order to try to keep people alive and then we have people like that one guy on her ship who i don't like i think that he is secretly a marco supporter but they're just trying to antagonize people like the one girl who actually is feeling guilty and feeling bad and feeling trapped like Kamina feels and they're just kind of dismissing her feelings and it's just frustrating because I feel like they don't see certain people don't see how how fucked up what Marco is doing is and it's so frustrating too because we have the the pasture guy right who was secretary of transportation or he had something to do with transportation and then he became the uh secretary general and he immediately sought christian for counsel and now it kind of seems like he's immediately dismissing Chris <sighs> you guys i just get really frustrated when people don't listen to christian one and to people who just like know what the fuck they're talking about okay like the military guy and this pasture guy based off of his speech which was a little bit more like let's kill people than i kind of would have liked it to be and this military guy like they are both thinking very emotionally and i mean i am not <laughs> i'm not knocking it because i do the same thing but they're thinking sorry i'm trying to figure out what i'm trying to say but their thought is okay let's blow up palace which is a civilian a civilian station that just happens to have a lot of belters in it of which they do not know the percentage that actually agrees with marco and the really frustrating thing is that even the percentage that agrees with Marco might only agree with Marco because they don't have any choice like Kamina and her faction for the most part. A lot of the people who agree with Marco don't see another way out and the frustrating thing is that once again Christian is right in that if you kill if you blow up palace if you kill all of these innocent people 
all you're doing is ensuring, like Christian and a few of the other people at that table were saying, so, you know, kudos to them because they don't want to just commit murder on innocent people. But if you do this, all you're doing is making sure that anybody who wasn't with Marco, who thought that he was being too radical, is then with Marco because you're proving that he's right and that Earth is just going to indiscriminately kill belters and it doesn't matter who they are or their affiliation or what they believe or anything. They're just gonna kill you for no fucking reason. And it's just, ah, it's so frustrating, you guys, because one, everyone is human, right? The, the pasture guy is giving this huge fucking speech about like, oh, you know, humanity, this, this is what makes us human. We overcome, we, we don't, I don't know, we get knocked down and we get up again. You know, now I have the song stuck in my head. But essentially, like, this is the overarching sort of thing that makes us human is that when shit hits the fan, we don't cower, we rise and we fight back and blah, 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 right? And I'm like, Belters are humans too though, <laughs> like, right? Like is, are we forgetting that? Are, are we forgetting that? Martians, guess what? Also human, also fucking human. Like all of these people that exist in the world right now as we know it, because you know the protomolecule hybrids are no longer with us, are human. They're all just fucking human and it's, it's so, and I know, I know. <laughs> I know that it's very realistic because it's what we do, we humans in, in the world that we live in now, but it's just, it's never made sense to me. It's never made sense to me. Like, I understand Marco is bad. He has killed, like he single-handedly, well not single-handedly, but you know, Philip had to do with it, so did other people, but he, it's like, why are you punishing a group of people for something that a person did? It's just such a stupid mindset and I, I don't understand it and I don't approve of it and I don't like it and I don't like Marco's mindset and I also don't like these people's mindset. I just feel like everybody's mindset is so broad. It's so stupid. It's like, <clears throat> there's no accounting for individuality. There's no accounting for the fact that an individual person is not responsible for what people at large do, right? All of the individuals on Palace, regardless of their affiliation, are not responsible for what Marco does and therefore should not have to pay for Marco's crimes. Just like the individual people on Earth who are just trying to live their fucking lives and being oppressed as hell by the government based off of everything that we've seen so far, like they're not responsible for what Christian or Pasture or uh, Sorrentino Gillis or you know any or Aaron Wright or any of these people. They're not responsible. These individual people on Earth for what those people chose to do and who those people chose to kill. And I'm not saying that there's not you know discrimination and there's not a a way of thinking that is pervasive. Whereas earthers think that they're better than belters to some extent, some of the time. But again, individuals are not their governments, one. And they shouldn't be held responsible, right? Now, here's the thing. I'm not saying that I would agree with Marco ever, but if Marco had decided to attack like parliament, or had decided to attack Nancy Gao, or had decided to attack Christian, or, you know, the government in some way. Again, <laughs> I'm not saying that I would have agreed, but it would have made more sense. He's attacking innocent people who have nothing, or he murdered innocent people who had nothing to do with the belt being oppressed, or with, I don't know, I just, and I know that casualties of war is a thing and I know that I'm sure somebody in the comment is gonna tell me again that I don't understand war, but you know what? I, I don't understand war to an extent. I don't understand the mindset that people have where casualties are okay. 
where innocent people can be killed and that's an acceptable cost you know i i don't i don't i don't understand it and i don't believe in it and i don't support it and i don't think that innocent people should pay the price for the crimes of other people i don't i don't i don't think that that's excusable i don't i don't think it is and i'm sorry this is this has probably been a rant but i just get really frustrated when I just get really frustrated because I feel like each side is trying to come to some sort of terms with the other side, right? And neither side is actually looking at it from the other side's perspective, at least the people in charge. Again, like those people at that table, like Christian, that one lady, they are fighting and saying, and, and there was another person too, like, okay, how many people actually support Marco? Like, what is the casualty count of innocent people? We can't just kill people who have nothing to do with this. That's not okay. I, I don't know. I don't know, you guys. I think that I've explained what I think as well as I can. And I'm just gonna leave it at that because I don't agree. I don't agree. I don't... They're all just fucking humans you guys it's so frustrating it's so frustrating like it's frustrating then and it, on the show and it's frustrating now in this world that we live in because we're all just humans and like i don't know why it's so fucking hard for people to realize that okay like just be fucking kind to other people <sighs> just be nice to people why is it so hard why is it so hard Okay, so I probably cut some of that because I, I, I don't know. I don't know, you guys. I just, I get frustrated because I don't know why it's so hard for people in this world or in the expanse world to just look across the differences and realize that they're all just fucking people. We're just human and we're just trying to figure it out and exist and be happy and live a life and yeah I'm, I'm gonna move on because because I, I feel like I've lingered on this for a long time I'm sorry okay so moving on uh I did not know that Sen was dead I I did not know that and I was very surprised I just thought that if you listen to my post episode discussion last week I'm pretty sure you'll realize that I thought that he was still alive and I didn't, I did not see that coming. I did not, I didn't, I did not know he was, <laughs> I didn't know he was dead. I just thought that the doors would close and that the oxygen would come back in and he would have enough time to be okay. Anyway, that is unfortunate and that is sad. And you know, once again, Marco just being a fucking asshole and telling Philip that that's his fault somehow. Somehow Sen dying is his fault and Naomi jumping out of the airlock is, is his fault when really it's Marco's fault. As I have been saying for many episodes, that is a classic abuser tactic to make you feel like things that are their fault are your fault. You know, never taking responsibility or taking accountability for your actions you know, typical Marco, typical abuser, not surprised, <sighs> not surprised. All right, to, to go to a little bit of a calmer story, we have Amos on earth in Baltimore. We saw him in um, Clarissa P for, you know, whatever reason, I don't know. It was an interesting scene, I guess. And we also saw that a bunch of older people had been murdered, it looked like to me. I, I don't know. I just think that, that Amos is right and that Earth is, is kind of fucked right now. And yeah, just, it's kind of like in The Walking Dead, you know, when, when shit goes down, sometimes people who are not good people will thrive in that kind of world and the people who are good people will pay the price for the fact that the not good people are thriving. I really liked the conversation with 
Clarissa and Eric and Amos as well when he wants to stay and he wants to keep being the ruler, the king, the whatever of Baltimore, Eric, I mean. And Clarissa kind of points out to him that the life that he had before is gone and and he doesn't realize it. Like the lady in prison who who had killed her kids told Clarissa, you know, your life, the one that you knew and that existed before, it's gone. Like you, what'd she say? Like you're acting like you're still alive. You're the only one who doesn't realize that you're dead, kind of, right? Like in, in prison. And I think that that's really interesting because I think Eric was acting like, okay, this is just the churn, right? This is just another another instance where I have to rise to the top and I can still take care of this. I can still rule Baltimore. I can still have the sort of kingdom that I built here. And he's not realizing that it's it's not the same anymore. And that life that he knew, that part of his life is over and he has to just move on and find a different life now. And I'm very interested if like what he's going to do in space because I presume that they're going to get to one of those hangars and he's going to leave and go to Luna and then from Luna I don't know where but I don't know it's I'm almost relieved that Amos is away from everybody right now because they're all converging on a spot that I am very worried is going to be deadly for at least somebody and I'm kind of happy that Amos is away from that right now but I'm also like I wish that he was he was there to offer some sort of support or comfort but I don't know I'm just scared that he's gonna go back up to earth or not to up to earth back to space and something is gonna have happened and he's gonna be like you know, I don't know. He just, he didn't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say, you guys. I'm just worried that he's gonna return to a world that's a lot different than the one that he left and it stresses me out. We talked, I talked about this a little bit at the beginning, but let's talk about my girl, Naomi. She is doing the most possible in this ship to try to stop the distress signal, which she did to try to send out a new distress signal, which she did, but we don't know who got it or where it went and if Marco fucking got it. <sighs> but she is doing literally everything she can to try to stop the people that she loves from coming to this ship and getting hurt. And I just, uh, I'm really scared you guys because I don't, I don't want Kamina to go. I don't want Holden to go. I don't want Bobby and Alex to go. I don't want, anybody to get hurt and obviously if Naomi's in the ship when it blows up then she's gonna get hurt too um and it just scares me I don't want I don't want anything bad and they're all going and nobody's gotten the distress the real distress call and how is she gonna get out like she doesn't have an oxygen thing she doesn't have any any more of, of that stuff obviously a person a person isn't enough to trigger the detonation. So if somebody could get a call, then maybe if she could get like some kind of communication, then maybe somebody could send over an oxygen thing and then she could jump out in her suit and have oxygen and then they could get far enough away and then they could just let it explode and then Marco could think that everything went according to plan and everything's fine, but I just, I don't know how it's gonna turn out. I'm very proud of Naomi for how hard that she's working. Like her hands look pretty fucked up. It's, she's in a lot of pain. She's been through a lot. Like she literally almost died. I'm just proud of her for working really hard to try to, to do the thing and I'm scared. I'm scared for her and I, I just want for my crew to be okay, you guys. I just, I need them to all be okay. <sighs> and I'm scared. And I'm scared. And there's only two episodes left of the season. And I'm really, really fucking scared because of that. 
And also, like, Kamina, okay? Like, I don't know what, like, are they gonna go and tell her that Naomi might be alive now? Like, she's already been through so much. Like, like I said in the episode, like, how many people can she lose until she's, she's just not okay anymore? You know? Okay, so essentially my final thoughts on the episode are everyone is going after Naomi and that stresses me out a lot. <sighs> There's still the distress call, the actual distress call that Naomi sent, you know, who got it, who's gonna get it, we don't know. That stresses me out. Amos is on Earth. He's trying to leave Earth to go back to, you know, space, Luna and then space. And I, I'm, I'm less stressed out for Amos because he seems in the safest position right now. We also have, you know, Earth trying to fucking kill a bunch of innocent people because answering atrocities with atrocities definitely makes sense. <sighs> and of course, you know, Naomi is on the Chetsamoka where she is trapped and if any ship gets too close, it will blow up and kill her and everybody that she cares about. So, you know that's happening and we have marco and philip and we don't know what they're doing and we don't know we don't know what they're doing or where they're going or what they're doing and it stresses me out anyway i think that that is all that i have to say about this episode thank you guys so much for watching as always if you want you can like comment and subscribe if you aren't already and you can see the next episode right now over on patreon which is linked in the description below. And I am going to not watch the next episode yet, even though I'm very tempted to, because I am also very scared to <laughs> watch it and see what happens. So yeah, I'm gonna, stop I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop rambling now, you guys, I'm sorry. Until next time, bye guys.